they love the gentleness. And do you know, we absolutely mold their character. We make them strong or we make them weak. Now, I'm going to say something really heavy to you, girls. I may not read any more scriptures. You read what I gave you when you get home. Women do not like to admit this. But women, when we go through brokenness, proud women especially, and we cannot forgive, we never learn how, even when we're trying to get things back together, we never learn that even though, let's just say it was your husband, and it's really most of his fault, I got a little word of message for you. I found in the middle of my brokenness, when I thought everything was Buck's fault, and of course he thought everything was mine, it's always half and half whether you know that or not. Now I'm telling you most of the time it is. Weigh it out and you'll find it out. I never had learned how to build Buck's ego. Now I laid that one on you. I've always been secure, written songs all my life, and always been on the road since I was 12 years old, never met a stranger, more at home right here in this pulpit than I ever am out in my own house. I just love to serve people, especially women. So I was very secure. I figure anything can be done. I'll try it. It may not be done great, but I'll tackle it. Because I just think, you know, God, you know, he instills this in us. He did in me. But Buck was this little shy guy from the hills of Kentucky that was converted in one of the meetings that I was singing in, and he'd never sung in public, never spoke in public. He just sat back after Reed was born and was my babysitter. But when the Lord started coming along and dealing with him, he had to bring his ministry a long way. And, and Buck Evermore is the head of my house. He's a very secure, strong man tonight. But that's another, another story and another seminar. But the Lord had to teach me that he hadn't been traveling all these years. He wasn't called in the ministry all these years. He wasn't a singer all these years. And he wasn't strong, but he, yet he's a, he was a strong man in his own right, in his own way. So when our breaking came, the Lord started dealing with me. Dottie, you're just a little too arrogant and cocky. You haven't learned how to build your husband's ego. And the Lord started dealing with me to teach Buck that I loved him and to build him up, brag on him, and never get in front of people and put him down. Now, women, if you do that, I'm not going to look at any of your expressions because I may see some guilt. Okay. Put him down, you know, in, in public. That's so bad. The Lord can never build you until you learn to build him. And until we make him our covering. Of course, I'm very aware that the man has to gain our respect. You know, I'm, I'm aware of that. But he has to be our covering. And the Bible said, be subjective to your husband. Now, it doesn't mean that you're his doormat that he watched his feet on. But please let him have his rightful place. Now, I'm going to lay something else heavy on you. Some of the problems that women have with her husband is because they drive them to do things. I drove Buck to do things he never would have done if I'd have known how to treat him. You drive him away from home. You nag. You favor the children. In my house, God comes first, my husband is next, and then my children, my child. That's in that order. God, my husband, my child. Now, when I see a woman that can't hardly caress her husband, speak well of him, kiss him, hug him, and want to be with him, but she'd rather be with her children, and she takes up for the children and puts the husband down, you got trouble. You evermore have troubles on your hands because the husband is evermore the last word. That's the way the Bible really meant for it to be. And Adam and Eve back there, that was the beginning of all of it. And you're going to suffer having children. So that's where it all started. That's where it all started. Now, my baby, only child Reba, can absolutely sit her father down and twist him around her pinky finger. Anything she wants, she gets within reason. And especially since she's pregnant. She is the cutest spoiled rotten brat you've ever seen. Took her shopping last week for maternity clothes, and she walks through, and she's got a new voice now since she's so spoiled. Mama, I need a new maternity dress. Used to was Daddy. All of a sudden, since she knows that I've had a child, she knows that I know how she's feeling. So she knows she'll get it from me, see? We took her shopping for one outfit, came back with nine. Yeah, that's the truth. It's the gospel truth. She can do that to her father, but 
when it comes down to if she's stepping on mother's authority as mama in the house and she's overriding mother buckle said no no wait 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 just a minute now we gotta get a priority straight because buck respects my position in our family my last word is mama well, and if you if you do this, ladies, it's the worst sin you can make on do to your husband. If your if your kids are acting up, and your kids come in and you say to them, "Now, I'm a telling you, I'm gonna get in your eye like an onion, or I'm gonna beat you like the neighbor's dog, or I'm gonna slap your face off." Have you ever seen a kid's face slapped off laying over on the floor? I'm going to make a barber pole out of you. That means stripe your legs. And they go through all these things. I'm going to knock your head against the wall. Now you just see their head knocked against the wall, you know. Beat your brains out. You see brains everywhere, you know. Blind you. And they go through all this with the kids. Well, the kids get used to it. It's a joke. They don't believe anything their mama tells them. And they just jest, you know, and go in the other room and say, ha, 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 she'd never do anything. I, well, finally ends up, I'm going to tell your father when he gets home. And the dad comes in, she meets him at the door, John, you ought to hear what Charles did today. And she goes through the whole thing. Gets through and the dad says, okay, Charles, come in here. We're going to reckon with you. We're going to take care of this matter. Charles goes into the bedroom and daddy starts. And all of a sudden, mama walks through the door with a rolling pin and says, you touch that child and I'll kill you. The kid hadn't learned anything. Not anything. He didn't know who to believe and he's not afraid of anybody. That's the reason he runs out and gets in trouble. We need to learn where a husband's place is and build the ego and build him as the head of the house and figure out once and for all that our husband didn't get in trouble if he's being unfaithful to you just because overnight the cute little secretary walked in and winked at him and they work late at the office. That's not what started it all. It all started back there where you maybe you wasn't quite where you ought to be with him. Maybe you didn't treat him just right. Maybe you didn't build him up. Maybe you weren't gentle with him. Maybe you didn't motivate him. And maybe you didn't encourage him and brag about how well he did on his job, how great his promotion was, how handsome he was, and encourage him to lose weight, jog with him, go golfing with him, go fishing with him, fix yourself up for him. Could have started way back there when all of a sudden you got fat or you got skinny. All of a sudden you would take him to McDonald's for every meal. All of a sudden, you didn't take care of your own stuff anymore. And when he, time he hit the door till he left, you were nagging. And you wonder, why doesn't he come home at night? Why was he out till 2 o'clock in the morning? But somebody must have been gentle with him because they got his attention. Some other lady that probably you said, but Dottie, I'm of size 6, have nice hair, nice teeth, I dress well. And I look at me, I don't look bad. And you ought to see what he's having an affair with. Now hear me, she's a little overweight, she's too short, not nice complexion, she doesn't have good taste in clothes, she's a, sort of illiterate, but she's jolly, she's happy, she's fun to be with, and she's reassuring, she bi builds the man up, and I'm not telling you what he's done is right, I'm just saying that's what happens a lot of times. And a man just gets tired of listening and looking at what his wife is becoming. I had become not a, nag not a fusser, but a nagger and a powder in our problem. I, was, I, I nag in my own little sort of way, but not fuss. You know, we just didn't fuss. And I'd pout and withdraw. And I looked like death walking around, just needed to fold my hands and lay down the casket. No man wants to look like that or look at that all day long, every night, every day. Well, when the woman says, but Dottie, but Dottie, you don't know what happened. No, I really don't. But I know what happened in my own situation. And I know if it hadn't been for the mercies of the Lord, I wouldn't be standing where I am tonight. And girls come into church and sitting there and bleeding inside by yourself is not going to help the healing process start. You need to go to somebody you trust and sit with them and say, cry with me.